Welcome to this pre-recorded session for the feedback on Pearson Edexcel GCSE Physical Education Summer 2023 Components 1 and 2. In this session, we will provide feedback on national performance of candidates on Edexcel GCSE Physical Education Components 1 and 2 of the 2023 Examination Series. Consider a range of responses in a variety of questions and explain how marks were awarded. Discuss both principal examiner reports via candidate responses, but please note that the principal examiner reports for paper one and two will be available within your pack of supporting documents. To begin, let's remind ourselves of the assessment structure and some changes that were announced in June 2022. The qualification has two examined papers. Paper one is worth 36%, and paper two is worth 24% of the total qualification. The remaining 40% is a non-examined assessment referred to as NEA. Support materials and details in relation to NEA can be found on the Pearson website. Link included within slide 49. The focus of this session is solely upon both written exam papers. The value of the papers differs as component one covers more content than component two. Therefore, the length of the paper and marks awarded are greater for component one. Each assessment is designed to allow candidates thinking time. There are a range of question types on each paper, from multiple choice questions through to extended open response questions. The use of data is also tested across both papers. It is very important to note that there are no changes to the content each paper is split up into three sections, A, B and C and focuses on a particular topic from the specification. Section C within component one will focus on physical training and component two will be focused on either sports psychology or social cultural differences. It is also important to note that the only command word that will be used for each of the nine mark extended questions will be evaluate across both paper one and paper two. Both exam papers will have a multiple choice questions, short answer questions and longer answer questions, but the number of each question type will vary between the exam papers. Multiple choice questions will have four options. The candidate must select the correct option. These question types can range from AO1 to AO3 questions. Short answer questions can require one word answers, e.g. labeling a component of the heart or a muscle. The command words used with these types of questions can be state, label, identify, predict, complete, and explain. Longer answer questions will use different command words, e.g. describe, explain, examine, analyze, and will be worth more marks. Examples of the three questions are shown on this slide. The final question type is the extended response. These are the essay questions where the candidate's quality of response is considered rather than simply how many correct statements are made. These questions assess three assessment objectives, knowledge, application and the ability to evaluate. There is now only one extended response question on each paper, each worth nine marks, a maximum of three marks for each assessment objective. Questions are assessed in two ways. Points-based mark schemes reward every appropriate mark with a mark. Levels-based mark schemes do reward correct content, but the quality of the re response is also considered in terms of how the knowledge is used in the response and applied to give logical, reasoned arguments to justify points being made. Extended responses are assessed through levels-based mark schemes. Let us now look at the grey boundaries for this year's components 1 and 2. The top image shows the component level grey boundaries for key grades for GCSE PE. The second image shows the total number of candidates that sat GCSE PE. The number achieving each grade and the total mark required for each grade. The cumulative percentages are mainly based on UK entries for 16 year olds in the year 11 cohort. It is also worth noting that the percentages may change slightly due to exam paper reviews. 
Let us now look at candidates' performance on multiple choice questions. Each question will start with a specific command word. There is a list of command words on the website, which gives a complete taxonomy of words, which might be used in any one exam. Multiple choice questions are designed to be accessible to most candidates. Although some questions on both papers proved more challenging than others. The slide shows each multiple choice question for both components and their mean mark. The data shows that during this series, candidates found the multiple choice questions in paper two slightly more accessible with a higher overall mean mark. The most difficult multiple choice question for paper one was 1D with a mean mark of 0.57, whereas paper two's most difficult multiple choice question was 6A with a mean mark of 0.72. It is important to note here that all the data in this presentation is not from 100% of all entries for both paper one and two. To see further analysis of the multiple choice questions, please see the principal examiner reports for both paper one and two. We, are, we will now look at some example student responses to short answer questions from this year's papers. You may find it helpful to refer to the mark schemes and you may want to pause the presentation after each slide to allow you to do that. Remember, full question papers and mark schemes for both papers are within your pack. This slide gives two examples of a short answer question from paper one. Question 3i and ii. This candidate correctly completes each gap within the text gaining full credit on both 3ib, 3bi and 3bii. This example for the same questions demonstrates where a candidate didn't perform so well. The candidate gains two out of the three marks available for 3BI as they incorrectly state that the ribs are irregular bones instead of flat bones. The candidate doesn't gain any marks for 3BII as they incorrectly state short and to allow movement instead of irregular and protection, muscle attachment, mineral storage or structure. This slide gives an example of a short answer question from paper one, 10C. The command word used is explain. The candidate gives two marks, gains two marks for giving a reason response regarding why the test is a, isn't appropriate. Credit for only measuring in the stomach and reference to them needing muscular endurance in the legs gains a second mark. The stats on the right hand side of the slide show that the majority of candidates got one mark or above, demonstrating that it was an accessible question with 62.1% of candidates gaining above zero out of two. This example for the same question demonstrates where a candidate didn't perform so well. No credit for stating that the muscles are under constant tension the answer must refer to working continuously or working for a period of time. It is also very important to note that no marks have been awarded for improving muscular strength, as the function of the fitness tests are to measure fitness and not improve it. This slide shows an example of a short answer question from paper two. Question 3a. The command word used is state. This candidate correctly states two other factors that can affect optimum weight, height and gender. It is clear from the stats that this was also an accessible question as only 15 candidates, 15% 15 of candidates scored zero marks with over 50% gaining full marks on this question. This example from the same question demonstrates where a candidate didn't perform so well the candidate does not gain a mark for their first response, bone density, as it is a repeat of the question. The candidate does gain credit for their second response, gender, gaining one mark out of a possible two for this example. This slide gives an example response of a short answer question from paper two, question 8BI. The candidates were required to explain one advantage of using a demonstration as visual guidance for beginners. 
Just over half of the candidates scored at least one mark, but struggled to gain full marks. An example of a full mark response is shown on this slide. This candidate has correctly stated both points from the first bullet point on the mark scheme relating to seeing and correcting errors. This example for the same question demonstrates where a candidate didn't perform as well. This candidate gains one mark for referring to seeing the movement of a skill, but they don't gain the second mark for impact, as there is no reference to copying the action or correcting errors. Let us now summarise what candidates did well on short answer questions. When candidates perform well, questions were read carefully, responses already provided in the question were not repeated, and the question context was used to arrive at the correct answer. Candidates also used appropriate terminology to reinforce their understanding and included sporting examples where necessary. To see further analysis of the short answer questions, please see the principal examiner reports for both paper one and two. We will now look at some example student responses to longer answer questions from this, year, from this year's papers. You may find it helpful again to refer to the question paper and mark schemes within your pack. You may want to pause the presentation after each slide to allow you to do that. The longer answer questions across both component one and two are still marked using a points based mark scheme. The typical command words used within these question types are describe and explain. The candidates' responses need to be linked and show some form of development throughout the response. This slide gives an example of a longer answer question from paper one, question 6i, ask candidates to explain the importance of white blood cells when training for a long distance event. The candidate gains two marks for help fight off infection and the impact that training isn't disrupted. For the candidate to gain the third mark, they would have needed to refer to health slash remaining well or not becoming unhealthy. This example for the same question demonstrates where a candidate didn't perform as well. The candidate fails to gain any marks on this response as they make a link between white blood cells and oxygen. This slide gives an example of a longer answer question from paper one, question six, II. Ask candidates to explain the importance of blood plasma when training for a long distance event. The candidate gains all three marks for explaining that plasma carries red blood cells, which provide oxygen, preventing fatigue. This example for the same question demonstrates where a candidate didn't perform as well. The candidate fails to gain any marks on this response due to simply stating blood around the body instead of red blood cells, or it's the liquid part of the blood. The candidate also gains no credit for, for staying cool, as this is a part of a developed response, and the candidate does not include further information relating to transporting nutrients or helping regulate water balance. The candidate would have needed to state plasma helps transport nutrients, helping to regulate water levels, reducing the chance of becoming too warm during training and needing a rest, which would have gained three marks. This proved to be a well-differentiated question for candidates with a full range of marks awarded, with 57.3% of candidates gaining between one to three marks out of a possible six. In this example of a longer answer question for question four, A, from paper two, candidates were asked to explain, using the energy balance equation, how Sarah can maintain the correct weight. It would be advisable now to view the response, pause the presentation to consult the mark scheme and formulate what score you think the answer was given out of a possible four marks. Then restart the presentation to see the mark total and where the marks were given. The candidate gains the first two marking points from the mark scheme for correctly explaining the energy balance equation. The third marking point 
is achieved for explaining weight loss occurs if you eat less calories than what is burnt off during exercise. The candidate gains the fourth mark for reference to the fourth bullet point from the mark scheme relating to being too heavy for the fight. This example for the same question demonstrates where a candidate didn't perform as well. The candidate gains two marks for reference to both sides of the energy equation, i.e. energy in is equal to energy out. The response doesn't contain any further credit as there is no reference to gaining slash losing weight or a link to being unable to fight. The statistics demonstrate that the question differentiated very well, with a full range of marks from 0 to 4 being awarded, with 26.3% of candidates gaining 3 marks. In this example for question 7 from paper 2, candidates were asked to justify why the bowling action in cricket is neither a fully open or a fully closed skill. The candidate in this response gains full marks for correctly referencing predictable and unpredictable environments with two relevant examples. Open skills impacted by wind and closed skills are roughly the same. This example for the same question demonstrates where a candidate didn't perform as well. The candidate re receives no credit for the characteristics of open and closed skills as none are stated. However, one mark, for example, of open skill, i.e. reigning, and one mark, for example, of a closed skill, i.e. ball being bowled the same each time. The statistics demonstrate that the question differentiated very well, with a full range of marks from 0 to 4 being awarded, with 54.7% of candidates gaining two or more marks. This slide summarises what candidates did well and what they didn't do so well on the longer answer questions. The required knowledge was recalled and applied correctly to the context provided in the question. Ideas were expressed clearly with appropriate examples where required. Understanding and higher order thinking skills were demonstrated by clearly developing ideas following through points in depth. The candidates that didn't do so well on these questions sometimes did not use the correct question context. Candidates found it difficult to develop their response and lacked application or the required analysis and evaluation. Finally, we will look, we'll now look at some example student responses to extended answer questions from this year's papers. You may find it helpful again to refer to the question paper and mark schemes. You may want to pause the presentation after each slide to allow you to do that. The extended answer questions are nine mark questions and there are now one on each paper. Unlike other questions on the papers, these have a levels-based mark scheme. Three marks are available for each of the AO objectives. Candidates need to demonstrate development of response similar to the longer answer questions. For purposes of this presentation, we will consider one extended question from each paper. This slide contains the two extended answer questions for both components one and two, and the statistics for both questions. It is clear that the candidate's performance on both extended answer questions is very similar. Question 13 on paper two proved to be slightly less accessible as a higher percentage of candidates gained zero marks. The full range of marks were awarded for both questions. We will now look at our first extended answer question, which will be question 13 from paper one.
this is an example of a level three response and seven marks. Each mark has been highlighted throughout this slide and the next one. The first paragraph gaining an AO1 for checking facilities and an AO2 for an example of glass. Please note that an AO3 wasn't awarded for bleeding as a candidate would need to include the consequence of this to gain credit. For example, unable to train. In the second paragraph, the candidate gains all three AOs for rules, foul tackles and the consequence, a break or dislocation. On the second page of the response, the candidate gains an AO1 for wearing correct clothing slash equipment and an AO2 for the example of shin pads. The statement regarding not being able to play in the final was considered vague as cut or bruise is unlikely to stop them playing in three weeks time. This is an example of a level two response from the same question, gaining four marks. The candidate gains an AO1 for stating overtraining, AO2 for frequency and duration, and an AO3 for a need to rest to regenerate muscle tissue. In the second paragraph, the candidate gains another AO3 statement for planning alternative training to avoid overworking muscles. No credit given for reference to diet or for rest on right hand side. It must be linked to principle of rest and recovery or rest providing time for healing or regeneration. No further credit also for repetition of overtraining. Question 13 from paper two asked the candidates to evaluate the appropriateness of massed and distributed practice for a beginner such as Petra. Please now view this slide and the next one, pause the presentation to consult the mark scheme and formulate what score you think the answer was awarded out of a possible nine marks. Then restart the presentation to see the mark total and where the marks were awarded. This is an example of a level three response and nine marks. Each mark has been highlighted throughout this slide with identification where each AO1, AO2 and AO3 were achieved. The first AO1 was achieved for correctly stating that mass practice is performed with very little breaks. A further AO1 and AO2 were achieved on the left hand side image for mass practice isn't really suitable for beginners as good cardiovascular fitness is required. At the top of the right hand side image, the candidate gains two AO3 statements for technique will decrease with fatigue and this will increase the chances of the beginner giving up. No further credit for repeated point of mass practice is used mainly for elite performance, but an AO2 is awarded for requires self-motivation. The candidate begins to evaluate distributed practice and gains an AO1 for it includes breaks and two AO2 statements for allows time for feedback and improves focus. The candidate makes a further AO3 statement for linking mass practice to an increased chance of injury. This response includes four AO1s, four AO2s and three AO3s, gaining an overall mark of nine. It is important to remember here that each AO can only be awarded a maximum of three marks. This is an example from the same question where a candidate didn't do as well. The candidate gains two AO1 statements for correctly describing both types of practice relating to the amount of breaks for each. The candidate also gains an AO2 statement for linking distributed practice with feedback. This response includes two AO1s and one AO2, gaining an overall mark of three. To see further analysis of the extended answer questions, please see the principal examiner reports for both paper one and two.
On this slide, several common issues relating to extended answer questions are listed. Where candidates fail to score marks above a level one response, they lack structure with no pre-planning, struggle to answer the question that was asked and lacked any real developed points, providing mainly descriptive points. This slide shows a good approach to an extended answer question. This example is related to paper two, question 13. The higher scoring candidates follow this pattern by writing paragraphs that progress through the AOs, demonstrating the full understanding of the question. As in this example, a good approach to these extended answer questions is for students to write a developed paragraph about each point they want to make. For example, demonstrate knowledge, then apply the knowledge, perhaps using an example, then refer to the impact on performance. An example of developed response is on this slide, which gains credit for each of the assessment objectives. Getting students to write after each statement whether they think it is an AO1 to 3 is a good way to improve their knowledge of how to answer these types of questions, while also providing value information to the teacher regarding understanding to inform future planning. This slide contains two very useful links. The first being the Pearson PE website, containing all the information you need from the specification to sample assessments, exam materials, forms, and administration, and lots of teaching and learning materials. It is also the place where you can keep up to date with any course changes. The second link is to the Pearson Exam Wizard. Which is, a real, which is a fantastic tool to help prepare your students for their upcoming exams. As the image shows, you can look at all the recent papers, build your own paper focusing in on certain topic areas, which can then be saved on exam wizard for future use or exported to Microsoft Word. This really does speed up the design of tests to check student progress and allows mark scheme and principal exam reports to be attached to your chosen questions. To find out more about the excellent number of courses that Pearson can offer, please visit the link on this slide that will take you to the Pearson's Professional Development Academy website. This is where you'll be able to select PE and choose several bespoke training courses. Thank you for taking the time to follow this training course. I hope it has been very informative and will help you and your students progress even further this academic year.